Hey folks, is it finally slate time? No, it's not, but we're getting close. Uh, so, full status update as of whatever the hell today is, the 31st of July. Um, the <clears throat> model itself has been finished and we have submitted an order request uh, through the factory that we're gonna have them manufactured in. They're still gonna be machined aluminum, um, but at this point, uh, we've submitted a request to get a sample to make sure that their tolerances and their processes are um, good enough to actually make us a full batch of slates that we can sell. So what I wanna do here today is I wanna show you the assembly of the slate. This isn't gonna be like, a, uh, like I, I'm not going to frame this like, oh, here's all the parts it comes with, here's what you need to do to assemble it, because that still isn't finalized at this point. Um, but we are basically 95% there. Uh, the only things that might change are specific packaging, which of course I don't have, um, the specific screws that it comes with, and maybe the color of like the little plastic bits and bobs that you need to assemble it fully. Um, there are other things like you might notice there's some adhesive on here already for a screen lens. I'm pretty sure that the final adhesive is just going to be, you know, a small square that you have to cut to size and make it work. Sorry about that. It's kind of a pain in the butt to do it any other way. It is what it is. Anyway, here's what we got. This is a uh, custom one-off brass machined slate. Uh, this was made by my buddy Retro CNC. Special custom just for me because we can. Um, the actual retail version will be anodized aluminum. So if you are planning on picking one up, which thanks for the support by the way, I know it's been a long, it's been a long process. It's been, shoot, nine months at this point. Um, yeah, anyway, the, the normal retail ones will be uh, anodized aluminum. Retro CNC will not be making those specific ones, uh, but he will be making one-offs that you might be able to purchase on his website. Uh, I, do, I have no idea the, um, the process for that. I don't know the pricing, I suspect, because they are one-offs, they are full custom. Regardless of the materials, they will probably be more than the uh, mass-produced, quote-unquote, we aren't making that many, uh, anodized aluminum versions. So yeah, here's where we're at. I have this one custom. I just want to show you guys the process for assembling it. That way you can decide for yourself, you know, are you happy with some of the compromises that I've made? Um, are you happy with how this is assembled? something like that. Uh, there are some modifications required to a stock SP to get it to fit. And to walk through that, I'm going to be taking apart this older prototype that I have, because let's be honest, I just don't have that many parts. I can't keep building slates. I don't have that many backlight kits. I don't have that many working SPs. Anyway, so this is, if you haven't already seen, more or less the final design. This was a slightly earlier prototype than this one. Um, so this is about 90% of the way towards a finished model. I'm gonna take it apart because this was quite literally never finished. There's no anodization on this. I think I'll paint it, you know, why not? Um, plus I gotta swap out the plastic back plate for an aluminum one at some point. Anyway, works pretty much like you'd expect, normal SP. Let's go ahead and Pull it apart. Oh no. I already lost my screw. So the intent is to ship the final version with Two different screws, come on. Never had this much trouble getting the battery cover off. Okay. 
two different screws. Uh, so the slate screws in particular will be either long or short and they should all be a um, Phillips head. Unlike the screws that I'm removing right now, which are not Phillips, they are hex. But like I said, screws aren't final, or at least I don't have the final ones. Now these two screws up by the shoulder buttons are different than every other screw. Those are not provided with the slate. You need to provide those yourself if you want to install them. They are not necessary for installation, but they do make things go, they, they do provide that finishing touch. And the bottom is a little bit of a snap fit. So one thing I would like to discuss on the bottom before moving on, you might notice that my hinge pins are a little bit shorter, or shoulder button pins, a little bit shorter than you might expect on a stock SP. That is by design. The slate will come with uh, two dowel pins that you can use in place of the original ones that are slightly shorter. I highly recommend gluing them in place and the process for gluing them is you literally just put a little dollop of super glue in the hole, drop the dowel pin in, wait for it to set, and then you can pop the button in like normal and put the spring on like that. The, um, the purpose of the shorter dowel pins is because otherwise, if we look at where that's positioned, you might see it'll run into the screen and it could cause spots depending on the specific length. It's Tolerances are real close, so I'd recommend using the shorter ones, and I'd recommend gluing them because otherwise, if you have the shorter ones in place, they could drop out and it'll ruin the shoulder button feel. Uh, I haven't had any problems with the glued shoulder buttons. I've been using, well, I've been using this one since about January, and I haven't had any problems with the glued shoulder buttons on it since I haven't had any other problems with it, uh, but this is a much, much older design that we've since moved away from due to uh, fitment related issues. You might notice that big old panel gap right there, big panel gap right there, big panel gap right, right there, so on and so forth. So moved a long way from that design, but it is what it is. Anyway, glued dowel pins significantly helps. Um, when I get the slate sample in, I will basically do this video again and show you just start from finish uh, taking a Game Boy Advance SP and turning it into a slate. We're not doing that today. Alright, let me move this stuff aside. Getting sidetracked. We'll come back to this. So here are the three motherboard screws. These are going to be real short. All of the tapped holes in this assembly are going to be M2 if you want to come up with your own screws. The motherboard screws, I believe, are 3mm in length. 4mm should fit but that depends on how deeply the holes are tapped. Um, so you might have to get a bottoming tap and finish the tap if you want to use a four millimeter screw, but that won't work for this hole, I believe. But that screw's optional, so it's not too big a deal. And something. Oh, there it goes. Just kind of jammed in there. All right. So there's our motherboard. You can see my earlier revision 
brackets in here. These had provisions for the hinge axles. I changed that very last minute. Uh, and now they look something like this. A little bit smaller. These are, <clears throat> excuse me, uh, these are 3D printed. Just drop them right in. They provide the two screw posts in the back, which are unnecessary, uh, but they also make they, they, they make the entire assembly just easier to uh, walk through. It's definitely possible to do without if for some reason you don't have brackets or they're messed up or I don't know, whatever happens. But if you do have them, I see no reason not to use them. Alright, so now that we have this basically disassembled, I'm not going to be using any more parts from this. I'm going to leave the brackets in and I'm going to leave the lens in, um, which I guess leads me to my next talking point. Let's talk about the lens. I have received some criticism for having this curved shape in here, um, but this is a DMG lens. The purpose in using a DMG lens instead of going full custom is that if you want to, you can get your own custom lens printed through any number of the custom lens services. <clears throat> in specific, this particular lens is actually printed by, by Bluish Squirrel. A regular DMG lens is the exact same outline, you just have to get custom printing. Or if you really want to, you can use a blank DMG lens that'll fit just fine as well. Now that's not to say that an actual like DMG printed lens will fit because I mean it it does physically fit within the shell you can install it but as you can see the cutout for the screen area isn't quite right and if you are planning on using it for just Game Boy Color it doesn't quite fit it's close but not quite there but as you can see it's the exact same um, glass template so if you wanted to get your own custom printed that should make things nice and easy for you or you could just use a blank one if you are so inclined uh, and we also have but I just misplaced it there it is you can also get these like uh, Raspberry Pi um, like Game Boy Zero style lenses, you can use that if you want. The top left and right border is just about what you want. It's a little shy. The bottom border is way too thin, so you will see uh, you'll, you'll see the uh, the sides of the shell. I mean, you'll you'll see it on all four sides, but it'll be especially obvious on the bottom part. Um, you can work around that by just like painting that black, I guess but there are options. You don't have to use the lens it comes with. Um, that's why we didn't go full custom. I wanted to leave options open for people that like options, but it will be coming with a lens. It'll be coming with one of these bad boys. Uh, so let us continue with the install. I will set that aside. Um, one more thing I'd like to discuss. I can't really discuss it on my new shell, my brass one at least, because you might notice it just doesn't have these two holes here. So the purpose of the holes is if you are using one of the backlight kits from the one chip company, which is gonna look like one of these bad boys, I have them desoldered here because I just haven't been using them in my test builds, but this has touch pads. The point of these holes is you put the little copper tape sensor in the hole and that way you can just tap the lens to adjust the color palettes or brightness if you want. It's fully optional, it's covered by the lens, you can't see it once it's installed. But it's nice to have, if you want it, you can just tap the lens and you get brightness controls and now let's start a game just for an example. I don't know if I have palette controls hooked up on this one. I don't think I do, because I never use them, to be honest, but you get brightness. 
So for all the people asking me where is the brightness button, ask yourself how much you use the brightness button. And if it is on occasion, then get one of the touch sensor kits and install the touch sensor. There you go. If your answer to that question is basically never, then use whichever kit you want, funny playing, one chip, whatever, and don't even bother with any touch sensor. Which on that note, I guess let's talk about that now. Um, these slates will be sold through Retro Game Repair Shop and Retro CNC's website. Uh, if you buy through Retro Game Repair Shop, you can also pick up a kit that is specially made for this install. Um, if you buy through Retro CNC, retro-cnc.com, it's basically the storefront for Retro Game Repair Shop. Um, but international shipping is enabled on those specific items. So if it's listed on Retro CNC's site, and you're not in the US, you can still order one, but I don't believe the specific kits will be listed. So let's talk about the kit. Uh, this is designed to work with any of the 9380 based LCD kits. Uh, you can use any one you want. You can use Funny Playing, you can use one chip. It does not matter. I made the shell uh, so that they both fit. Basically, if the thicker PCB-based version works, then the thinner ribbon-based version will also work. Uh, so that applies to both Funny Playing and One Chip. That's what this specific cutout in the side is for, so you can install that nice and happy. But the thing is, is the uh, actual SP-based kits that you might order come with a laminated screen. You cannot use the laminated screen, unfortunately. You have to use a bare LCD, and delaminating the screen on your own is not a simple feat. That's just not, you're gonna have a bad time. I, If you're buying a kit separately, just buy a spare bare LCD and use that. Uh, if you don't already have a kit or already have a spare LCD, it's kind of your only option. Otherwise, you can buy the kit specifically made for this shell, which is basically just a regular SP kit, but then a regular Game Boy Advance screen. So on, so forth. Sorry, rambling. Anyway, let's continue with the install. Uh, the screen portion is designed to just drop in, but I'm going to do the lens first so that I don't get my fingerprints all over it. Like I said, I have already put down some adhesive in the interest of not making this video longer than it needs to be even though it is already going to be longer than it needs to be all right there we go here is the lens drop that right in there. Oh shoot. Try that again without dropping it. There we go. I tried to install it and then I dropped it and it shifted and the tape gripped it. Now I gotta clean it because I just got my fingerprints all over the inside as is tradition. But before I do that, I want to talk about one specific design facet of this lens. If you look at the side, and it's gonna be real difficult because my camera's not focusing on it, you can see that the lens is shy of the edge of the shell. That is by design. This is custom glass. Uh, we ended up, despite using the same outline as the uh, original DMG lens, which just got done talking about. We went with custom glass anyway because we wanted to get a thinner glass on there. Personally, I think it looks better and it works out really nicely to prevent the glass from spilling over the edges. In theory, that should make it more durable. I haven't had any durability problems with these, but that's basically a sample size of two. Um, and since I never used two at the same time, one. But if you're using a custom, or stock DMG style lens, if you can focus, you might notice that that 
glass itself is just a hair proud of the aluminum. So that is something to note. If you want to use a custom lens, it will be slightly tall. If you want to use the lens it comes with, it will be slightly recessed. That is by design. I split the difference because I couldn't account for the adhesive thickness, so I played it safe. Anyway, let me go ahead and get this cleaned up. Unless that smudge is actually on the outside, in which case this was a waste of time. Good enough. Set that down. Connect up the uh, backlight board to the screen itself. Peel off your protective layer. Oh, this is a Topley screen. I'm surprised I've been using that. I usually go with uh, LG ones, especially since I have so many extras. Uh, oh, that's in there. Oh, there it goes. Okay. So that should drop right in there. There is nothing. You don't need to, like, adhere it down. There's no adhesive gasket. You can pop it out and replace it if you want to. Um, I don't know that there is a lot of extra room inside if you do want to use adhesive gaskets. I will say, if you're using one of these PCB-based kits, don't glue it down. If you're using a funny playing-based kit, you can use some adhesive. There's probably enough extra room just based off the difference between the uh, PCB and the ribbon cable. But when in doubt, just drop it in. And then we can install the brackets, which just snap in. They are keyed. The left one snaps in, the right one kind of drops in. It doesn't quite snap in. I couldn't, I couldn't get the tolerances perfect on that, but might notice how that basically sits on top of the LCD connector. That is a very thin tolerance. Let's go ahead and install the buttons. This does also work with um, Retro CNC's SP buttons if you want to use those. I am personally not feeling the metal on metal look. But it does work. I gotta see if I can't get me some, uh, well, sorry, brass on brass look. I gotta see if I can get me some black buttons for this thing. Also, if for some reason you're using an aftermarket speaker, it's a little bit tight. So once it goes in, it's probably not coming out. But there you have it. Oh, and I almost forgot. I can't believe I almost forgot. There's a light pipe, or at least there should be a little light pipe. Um, also 3D printed, a little bit delicate, be careful, but it should fit into the holes right here so you don't have to just like fill it with hot glue. Um, the few that I tried have been very tight, so you might have to like press fit it. The particular problem is you want to try working around it, but it's not too big a deal. Get this out. This is a print, and it curves off to the left slightly at the end. That's why it doesn't fit. The tolerances on these are unfortunately not perfect. But press it in. It'll go in. It'll live there. It shouldn't ever have to come out. You can still slip the screen out from the top but having those in does help quite a bit. Now we want to install the motherboard. In this particular case, because this came out of a slate, this has already been prepared, but what we need to do to get this into a slate, this is non-negotiable, you need flush cutters, and you need to cut the four pins on the left shoulder, left shoulder button flush. They have to be flush, all right? Keep that in mind, they have to be flush. 
I haven't trimmed this one because it's already trimmed. It literally just came out of this slate. You can see what they look like out of a normal SP on this side here. Trim them flush on this side. But first, we will connect up the screen. Don't bother soldering to the brightness button because the brightness button will be mostly hidden. And you'll have to do a little bit of a fold on this ribbon, a Z fold right here to get it to fit. And we will drop the back panel in. The bend in the ribbon will kind of push it up a little bit, but it'll be fine. Try not to cross thread it. Oh, that's not in all the way. That's why it felt funny. On some of these, the tolerances are a little bit tighter and it'll snap down. Tolerances being what they are, no real workaround for that. There you go, that's down. Now we can screw in the motherboard. The motherboard has to be installed before you can install the backplate, but the backplate has to be screwed in first before you can screw in the motherboard. Here's where your three short screws go in. Notice I used all three screws, not just two of them like other designs. All right, and then from here, you can flip it over and admire your work if you want. But we're also basically done, so let's finish it up. All right, back to the back plate. Again, highly recommend gluing in the shorter pegs that it comes with. You can try cutting these down if you have a Dremel. Should work either way, but uh, we will be supplying shorter dowel pins because we can. Um, if for some reason your SP is overclocked like mine is, you will have to, and if your module is right there, you'll have to trim away a little bit of the bottom shell, but otherwise it is designed to work with a stock bottom shell. You can use whatever color you want, or even transparent, if that's what we'll floats your boat. <clears throat> otherwise, it goes together just like a stock SP does. Get it lined up on both sides. And this should be a snap fit. Including this bottom port, port, part, portion, geez. That snaps right on. All right. have the short cart slot screw, which is not necessary if you want to omit it, but I have one, so it's going in. And then we have the two corners, which the retail version should be Phillips, but particular screws I have are hex, so that's what I'm installing. All 
All right, if you did not use those 3D printed brackets, you're done. Pop the battery in, throw the, ba throw the battery cover on, Bob Jonti. Um, if you did, however, well, if you didn't, you might notice three empty screw posts. This battery screw post is always gonna be empty no matter what. Uh, there's just no way to work that into the design easily, and even if you did, it doesn't make a difference. This thing is so stiff, it's not going anywhere. These two on the edges, however, in some aftermarket shells, the tolerances are not as good as OEM shells, and you know, you might get a little bit of flex with the aluminum and if you're so lucky, brass, um, that's not really an issue. But, but, if you have the brackets installed anyway, you might as well install two screws. Now, in a normal SP, we have long screws in these two corners. In this design, you cannot use a long screw. Use short screws. Use, when you're taking apart your SP, there are those three motherboard screws. Set those aside and save them and use two of them for the outside here. If you use a long one in this corner, it will destroy your LCD. Do not use a long screw in this corner. A short screw will go in no problem. A long screw will go in and give you a big Throw the battery cover on. I will probably get this swapped out sometime soon, I swear. But for now, we're using that one. That in. And that's it. We're done. It's time to enjoy. And as you can see, all my buttons are working great. This brass one. I should have done this before I assembled it because now I gotta take it apart and do it. The edges aren't finished, so you hear that noise? That's the plastic getting hung up on the sharp brass edges. That's not gonna be an issue with the aluminum ones. It will be fully, fully finished. Uh, this one just, this was a one-off, you know. I didn't do, I didn't do all the finishing on it. Um, the mass-produced ones will, we're, we're paying a factory to do that because quite frankly, we're not gonna do that with the sheer volume of these things. But anyway, that's that. Uh, should be pretty good. This particular SP motherboard that I have installed is modified so it has a white power LED instead of the green power LED, but it's all the same. There is, Come on out. I did two holes just for symmetry in case you didn't want an emblem at all. But there is a cutout for an emblem. I promise at some point I will make a video on how to make these custom emblems. Or at least make a GitHub page or something. I'll publish something. But you can just use the stock emblem, just pop it out of your shell, uh, or use one of the aftermarket ones. Uh, if you're not using your OEM shell, you probably bought an aftermarket shell and probably came with one. This is what it is. Anyway, pop that in there, good to go. Let's talk about the ports. They are kind of recessed. There's not a whole lot I can do about that, but I did spend an agonizing amount of time making sure that it is still compatible should you want it to be. You can plug that in just fine. It is very tight, but there is more than enough clearance. And assuming your SP can actually link, it will work. Let me get my SP charge. That goes in there just fine, and it'll charge. And you notice the light pipe has, I don't want to say perfect diffusion because it's certainly not perfect, but it is pretty darn good and there's very, very little light bleed. I'm very happy with how that came out. But yeah, ports are good. Everything's good. 
Uh, the only problem is the like wireless link adapter accessory will not work. That's just a downside of this style design. Just physically does not fit. If you case mod this thing and insulate the back of this, it will plug in, it will work. Uh, same thing with the GameCube link cable. That'll plug in, but there you go. I hope that answers basically all of your questions. Uh, the only ones that I suspect remain at this point are how much and when. Uh, as far as how much goes, I don't know. I'm not actually running this. All I did was make the design and then essentially sell the design. Um, as far as when goes, like I said, we just submitted the order for a sample within the last few days. I have no idea how long it's going to take to make, probably a week or so. I have no idea how long it's going to take to ship, probably two weeks or so. Uh, from there, I will get that assembled and confirm it. I'll probably do another video at that point. Um, and then once that is confirmed, we will submit the order. Lead time on the batch is going to be at least a month. Um, shipping on that probably... I can't even begin to speculate. So this should be out by the end of the year, but specific dates, I don't know. You can sign up for in-stock notifications on Retro CNC's website. I will throw a link in the description. Uh, ignore the price. It's obviously not going to be a million bucks. That's just a placeholder. Um, I don't know what the price is. I just, I don't, I'm not setting that. I'm not, it, it's, it's, basically out of my hands at this point, but it is also basically done at this point. Oop. Oops. Let's start the game. There you go. It is a very quick, very easy install, I think, but there are some caveats. Like I said, you do need to trim those pins on your motherboard. You do need to glue those dowel pins in. Uh, and the fit can be quite tight in places, but I am extremely happy with how the uh, tolerances have come out. I tried matching the lanyard port cutouts, so even though you can't actually clip something in there, it still looks good, uh, and you can still use, because the actual lanyard port itself is on the back, you can still use it. This should work fine with USB-C mods if you want to pop that in there. Headphone jack users, sorry, you don't really have a choice, but like I said a very long time ago, I basically made this for me and then decided to share the design because other people like it, and I personally just don't really care about the uh, headphone jack. Um, might make a future revision to accommodate that, but don't hold your breath if that's what you're looking for. Uh, I also did... Oh man, I totally lost my train of thought. Let's talk about one more thing before I go, because I'm going to talk it in the mood. Alright. Oversized carts and accessories. So, some of the other designs uh, for a uh, SP in a solid state with no hinge um, aren't compatible with stuff like the e-reader, which works fine on mine. The problem specifically uh, with Boxy Pixel's design is that the thing is just too thick and you can't plug it in, but this works the same way it does on a stock SP where you plug it in and that link port just sits over the top because all this is is a pass through from here to here. So you don't need that to be plugged in. Uh, the only reason they included it was because this was designed for the original Game Boy Advance and this locked that port on the original Game Boy Advance. Um, Game Shark also 
working fine. Reason this doesn't work on, oh, the e-reader doesn't work on Zypher's design either because he has the cart slot flipped around and you just, there's no clearance. You can't, you can't get that in to, to plug in. It just doesn't work. Um, Game Shark seems to work fine. Uh, this should work on Zypher's design as well because the back isn't really that much thicker. But unfortunately, on Boxy Pixel's design, he opted to make it very thick, and that simply does not plug in. Uh, for example, yeah. Anyway, um, so by that merit. Basically, any other accessory you want to plug in should be good, including the original Game Boy Game Sharks. Or WarioWare Twisted. Because it's designed basically to use the OEMSP rear housing, so anything that works with an OEMSP rear housing should also work here. Great. And while we're at it, one more thing, just for those that this is going to bug, if you want to use a DMG lens, it does technically line up. It's a little itty bitty bit cut off on the top, if you can tell from the uh, bleed through. And of course, there's too much on the left, right, and bottom, but it does technically work if you want to limit yourself to Game Boy and Game Boy Color only games. You also have no battery light, but there you have it. So, one more comparison just because I already got it out. I didn't really want to bring him into this, but let's talk. Let's talk about the uh, obvious elephant in the room. Now. Boxy Pixels design. Again, he was working on his model way longer than I have, as far as I know. I was just very public with mine very quickly. Um, I'm still a little butthurt about how he stole the. Uh, I, no, stole is not, not a good word. How he capitalized on the hype that mine was generating to generate hype for his. I'm still a little butthurt about that, but. He didn't technically do anything wrong, so don't don't give him shit about that, okay? Um, but let's compare the designs, all right? Mine is quite a bit thinner. It is, if you pick up your stock SP, it should feel just about the same on the bottom. The difference is mine has a little bit more thickness going up towards the D-pad and A and B buttons whereas an SP is quite a bit thinner up at the top. You can see the buttons on mine are recessed, buttons on an SP are not. Um, otherwise, it's going to feel pretty darn similar. The shoulder buttons are going to feel a little bit more cramped because you can't put your finger over the whole button, you have to use just the corner, but it still feels fine to use in my opinion, just if you're one of those people who like basically engulfs the button with your finger, you're going to be in for some disappointment. Uh, but the actual design of the console, mine is significantly thinner because of design decisions that I made versus design decisions that BoxyPixel made. Um, I didn't have this big back on the rear, which does mean, unfortunately, that mine will have shorter battery life, assuming you opt to use an extended life battery with BoxyPixels. But, again, mine should work with anything that a stock SP works with. Uh, I don't have this gigantic lip on the bottom. I also don't have this gigantic lip on the front that prevents operation with cards like the e-reader, which, really not that big of a deal. Who even still uses one of these things in 2021? But, you know, if you want to say, oh, 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 he's got you there, then yes, I guess I do. But the width is basically the same between the two because we both 
just about copied the OEM dimensions um, because there's very little we could change regarding button placement and just overall size of the console without having to redesign everything. Um, but for more, more comparisons, my screen is much, much lower placed than his. And because I use an external lens versus an internal lens, unfortunately my screens are not laminated, but I think it lends to better looking proportions on the unit itself. It looks more like a traditional Game Boy. Looks, looks more like a Game Boy Pocket than anything else. Uh, whereas his, it looks, it looks significantly taller, even though, look, that's it. That's it. That's all. That's, it's really not that much taller. It just looks it because he has that brightness button there. And because the lens area itself looks smaller compared to mine. It's the exact same size screen in both of these things. You see mine has bigger bezels around the edge. That's it. Um... Otherwise, I think that's pretty much it. I mean, it's a very similar design, but you can only go in so many directions when you're starting with an SP and you're ending with a traditional uh, candy bar design for a Game Boy. That's basically all you can do unless you start redesigning the whole freaking thing and neither BoxyPixel nor I opted to go that route. Mine is compatible with OEM buttons. His requires his particular buttons. Um, interpret that how you will. But yeah, there you go. His his doesn't work any better with those extra accessories. And most importantly, he doesn't have any lanyard port. What's up with that? No, I'm kidding. It's really not that big of a deal. But anyway, yes. The purpose of this video, I it wasn't to, you know, shit on anyone. It wasn't to say, oh, his design bad, my design good. It was just Hey, we're almost there. It's a status update. We're almost done. I wanted to show you guys a little bit more about the inner workings of this thing, just because I simply haven't showed that yet. So I hope this answered questions. I hope this, uh, I hope this provided information that is helpful to you if you're thinking about going with one of these. There you go. One more thing I want to talk about. One more thing. One more thing. Oh, just one more thing, Mark. Oh, just one more thing. Oh. Um, it's going to bug me if I don't talk about it, so i got to talk about it. You might notice with the older design, I have this very sharp edge around the buttons, whereas with the final design, I have this very soft, curved finish on them. I 100% agree with you that this looks better. I do. It, it just does. It looks so much better. In the hand, however, it kind of sucks. Um, it works. It's usable. You won't hate it. But this, this curved design feels so much better than this sharp design, especially if you're the type that holds it like this and hits the buttons with the pad of your thumb. If you hit the buttons with the tip of your thumb, you probably won't notice, but if you hit the buttons with the pad of your thumb, this design simply just does not work. It is what it is. So, we changed it. Arguably, doesn't look as good. I'm sorry, I do agree with you, but this is what we're sticking with. Deal with it.